Welcome to the programme. The Saudi Emirati coalition fighting in Yemen says at least 26 people have been wounded in an attack on Saudi Arabia's Ahmba airport in the arrivals hall. Saudi state media says those injured are passengers. Yemen's Houthi rebels say that they are responsible for hitting and disabling the airport tower. Now, the Houthis have been escalating attacks on Saudi airports in recent months. On May the 26th, the Saudi military said they shot down a bomb-laden drone deployed by Houthis. The drone was targeting Jizan Airport, which is close to the southern border with Yemen. That same week, on May the 23rd, the Houthis targeted Rajan Airport, also near the Yemeni border, with an explosives-laden drone. Riyadh says the attack, the third against the Rajan Airport in a 72-hour span, was intercepted. And last year, on March the 25th, Saudi military say they intercepted three missiles over northeastern Riyadh. The debris from the missiles landed on a residential area, killing one person. Houthi rebels say the attack was aimed at King Khalid International Airport in Riyadh. Majoub Swahiri is director of the Gulf Studies Centre at Qatar University and joins me now here on set. A significant turn in events. Just your initial reaction to start with before we get into this detail of how, when, what and how, where. This was um, basically a changing um, uh, dynamic of the whole um, confrontation between Saudis and Houthis. Basically, in the last few weeks, the, the focus was on, on drones. Now they are using crows missiles, and basically it's a heavy missiles, and they can target easily um, a lot of headquarters, uh, you know, airports, uh, important bases, military bases. So basically that is a changing dynamic of the this kind of going war in Yemen. In terms of uh, the ongoing targeting of southern Saudi Arabia from northern Yemen, we've seen uh, the Houthis continually trying to target strategic locations, mainly airports. Is this just a lucky shot or is this a, a change in the sophistication of the weapons that they have? Um, it's important to put things in a context. At the end of the day, Houthis um, uh, are non-state actors. They are, they, are, they are not behaving as a state, despite the fact that they are kidnapping the government in Yemen. So basically, they are behaving in a way that, you know, they have access to the military. Uh, there is no doubt they have support, uh, state support, um, and it's everyone known in the region. And they have also access to buy weapons, and they have access to train people. So all of this together did help Houthis to build on also on the Yemeni military capabilities, which they also controlled it in the, in, since 2015. So basically, all of this together helped Houthis to have all of these military capabilities. More important, they actually did uh, 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 announced that they are t they have list of targets in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, and they said they have 300 targets, and they this kind list of targets they are going to uh, start you know target all of those gradually, and they basically in the before this um, uh, event they were talking about um, 295 uh, uh, you know uh, target is still remaining on the list. So basically, it's it's very it's very clear that it's planned. Uh, it's well planned, actually. The list is ready. They are, they are targeting, they are choosing the time, the right time to do so. And more important, they focus, they put things in a context, which is basically a Yemeni war and the war on Yemen, basically, in particular. And of course, you know, one can't expect Saudi Arabia to sit back and allow this to happen. I mean, what sort of retaliation can we expect? As usual, um, in, in, uh, after the few um, operations done by drones, they target some of the cities uh, in, around Sana'a and, and um, some good number of, 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 of uh, casualties, actually, of civilians were killed on, on different places. So basically, that is a normal reaction from the uh, coalition, the um, Emirati Saudi coalition in Yemen. And, and we expect the same, actually, reaction to continue as long as these kind of attacks from the, Yemeni, from the Houthi side. We t while the Houthis, you might say, um, focus their attacks on military, military installations and, and military targets, uh, and we see the reprisals from Saudi certainly hitting very close to civilian areas. We then see the international condemnation uh, of those attacks uh, on Yemen as such, but nothing seems to happen in the long term. Those 
attacks, condemnation, and it all is a vicious cycle that, that is but, ongoing. But is, this, is this a change, what's happened today? I'm not sure this will change, but let's not forget. Um, Saudi Arabia and the other Emirates are states. Houthis are non-state actors. The, the reaction of the international community absolutely will be different. You will be more tough on state rather than on non-state actors because non-state actors, in, in, as we know in the literature, they don't commit themselves on any kind of, um, you know, respecting any international law. They are behaving as a non-state actor. They, they have to achieve their goals. They have to be tough. They have to show their, uh, you know, uh, enemy that they are capable. So they, you expect this condemnation to continue, but as long as Houthi is controlling Yemen, and as long as they have this kind of access to the military capabilities and to behave not as a state, I think this kind of um, violence and, and, and the actions will continue. In terms of uh, the geopolitical scenario that we're seeing, we have the Japanese Prime Minister arriving in Iran uh, on uh, Wednesday. He is there to try and mediate some sort of negotiated settlement, be it with either Saudi Arabia or mainly with the US and the rising tensions in the Gulf. Such an incident is going to play into that conversation. I'm sure uh, at the end of the day, Saudi Arabia uh, blames uh, uh, Iran of being responsible of that. Uh, to Saudis and the Emiratis, Houthis are not acting without the Iranian support. And this absolutely will be conveyed to the Japanese, to the Americans, to the Russians, to every you know, country that Saudi Arabia has contacted with. So I think um, the focus of Japanese uh, uh, prime minister visit, it's on this kind of ongoing crisis between Washington and Tehran about the nuclear issue. And I do expect that uh, Japanese have interest to reduce the level of tension in the region and to push to sort of, um, you know, negotiation, uh, you know, closed door negotiations, sort of, of a solution to calm down the situation because uh, Japan has a lot of interest in the region when it comes to the energy and more tension, more confrontation will affect the the economy of Japan and also other Asian countries. I think Japan now is playing an important role. There will be an Osaka, the G20 conference will be on end of this month. I, I, I'm, I'm sure there will be sort of discussion about whether Rouhani will attend this conference mm. um, and this will be a good occasion so he can meet uh, European leaders and maybe Trump behind the door and talk about, you know, this kind of government crisis between Washington and Tehran. In terms of the, uh, the current situation, you know, it, the geopolitics to one side, now, you know, our international viewers might be looking at the situation and thinking Yemen is near to being what is a failed state, and yet you have this grouping of Houthis who are able to manufacture or produce a weapon that gets into Saudi airspace and can hit specific targets. Where are they making these weapons? Or are they being imported into the country, and if so, from where? I mean, of course, um, everyone knows in the region that um, uh, Houthis, in a way, supported by Iran. This was uh, not, not, not the decision, uh, not the, the, the allegation someone expert can say. This is sort of um, uh, um, reports com you know, confirm such thing. And, and I think Houthis, um, um, as, as, as other non-state actors in the region, they always uh, enjoy state support. And by the way, since 2001, Middle East has witnessed all of those wars and, and this kind of um, violence because of non-state actor and the support of, st of the states to non-state actors. And that's interesting to see that this is going on despite the fact that all of this condemnation and, and the criticism to the role of the state and non-state actors. Houthis, like others, without the state support, they will not be able to continue what they are doing. Mm. We shall see what happens, certainly what the reaction is. Majub Swari from Qatar University, thank you thank for you. your analysis. Let's uh, keep our message here now because we can uh, join Mohammed Al Atab, who's live for us uh, in Sana. Uh, just your reaction or what you're hearing about this attack into uh, Saudi Arabian territory. What are the Houthis saying? Uh, the Houthis, according to the spokesperson of the army, uh, he says that uh, 
the, these uh, these uh, kinds of attacks are legitimate uh, uh, targets because of the in revenge of the Saudi Arabia's uh, escalation and also its attacks on civilian areas for over the four years. Um, in in, in, in the, during the four years, uh, the Saudi Arabia has targeted uh, hospitals, uh, uh, also uh, public uh, pub public uh, companies, and also civilian areas. The the, the civilians here in the country have. Uh, on the, uh, they have went through difficult situations. Many civilians have lost their lives due to such uh, attacks uh, on civilian areas. So they, they, many people here and under the, in the areas under the control of the Houthis have suffered enough during the four years of Saudi war on the uh, Houthis. But the, the, the situation now, it, it turns now the, uh, the, fire, the fire backs to the Saudi Arabia. Now, now uh, civilians have become uh, also victims of the uh, retaliation of the Houthis yeah, uh, Mohammed, to Saudi Mohammed, can I just interrupt yeah. you there? Can I just interrupt you there, Mohammed? Yeah, we know about how, how the civilians are affected, but we really need to know what the Houthis are saying about this particular attack. They have been targeting southern Saudi Arabia for nearly a year now, and one of their missiles has finally hit a significant target. They, they must be quite emboldened. What are they actually telling you uh, about that attack? Uh, the, as I mentioned to you, that the uh, the spokesperson of the Houthis uh, says, says that the this attack is a legitimate uh, uh, target, and also the, uh, the the this uh, kind of missile, which is a cruise missile, that have been used in this uh, attack, uh, has hit its uh, target successfully, according to their plan. So we are talking about now. Uh, uh, over uh, to uh, 200, uh, uh, 295 uh, missiles that are, that, are, that are still in the waiting list to uh, hit Saudi Arabia and also other countries are involved on this uh, war in Yemen. Uh, the, these kinds of escalation, uh, it, it, uh, it's also an, an, another alarm to the United Nations and also other international community to, uh, to step in closer and also to stop as the, this uh, vicious uh, violence and the, that continues to impact civilians. Uh, Ye Yemenis have endured a long time of uh, the, the war and also the blockade mm. that, uh, that continues also to kill civilians silently because of the severe shortage of medicines and also other essentials. We hope that the uh, if you uh, I heard one of your guests is talking about I heard one of your guests is talking about the the uh, the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the Houthis are, are being fought here in the in these areas, but the, the, in, in Al Mahara, which is to the south of the country, there is still also escalation by this between the Saudis and the United Arab Emirates and Oman. Uh, they have there is kind of a division in this in these areas where the Houthis are not do not exist in these uh, places. Mm -hmm. So it's not only only about Houthis here in the. In, in, in Yemen also. It's a war on Yemen, is, uh, especially in the southern areas, which are in, under the control of the Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Also, they are suffering from uh, su such attacks, uh, from the uh, escalation of violence there. Uh, so the, the, the United Nations has, has to, do, to do something serious to end the, uh, the, this kind of, uh, the, this kind of uh, confrontations between fighting factions okay. and to bring them to the negotiating table to resolve their differences yeah. there. Yeah, we understand. And of course, uh, we'll come back to you for more analysis as we get it. Thank you. Ahmed al Tab there. Uh, let's uh, join Hassan al Bukhati. He's a journalist uh, and joins me now uh, also uh, from Sana. Good to have you with us uh, on the programme, sir. Now, uh, as we've been hearing, you know, the, uh, and listening to uh, and getting reaction from the Houthis, have been targeting uh, the southwest uh, of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and as these reports seem to now confirm, they've hit a major target. Uh, it is a significant success for uh, Houthi forces, uh, and yet there is this threat, we've been told, and, uh, uh, that as many as 200 other targets are being lined up. I mean, what more uh, can you tell us? Um, 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 the, the Yemeni army and the popular committee, uh, or the Kurdi Mansar, the Houthis, uh, have, de have declared uh, about uh, six to seven months ago that they have uh, 300 uh, 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 targets in Saudi Arabia, including vital uh, uh, infrastructure. This means it doesn't need to be uh, a fully uh, uh, military target uh, because uh, they, I mean, as they say here in Sana'a, um, we came to a stage that an eye for an eye. Uh, to stop the Saudi blockade in Yemen and uh, the continuing closure of Sana'a Air 
ايربورت يمني فورس هير ان صنعاء ديسايد تو تارجت سعودي ايربورت دي ستارتد وي ذا نيرست ايربورت تو ذا يمني بوردا ويتش از نجران ايربورت ذن جيزان ايربورت ذن خميس مشيط ميليتري بيس اند ناو از ابها ايربورت اند ذا سعودي كان اكشلي ستوب ذات ان ان ماتر اوف اوف مينيت دي شود ستوب targeting Yemen infrastructure and reopening Sana airport for humanitarian need. That's all. Okay, uh, Mr. Bukhati, let's also then talk about the actual missile that was used. Um, there are two confirmations uh, that we have uh, via Reuters, one from Dubai and one from Cairo. Different reporters saying that a missile was used, another reporter saying a cruise missile was used. Can you confirm what type of missile was used on Abha airport? Uh, it was a, a cruise missile uh, the, that was used. Uh, uh, the first test uh, of this uh, missile was successful test uh, when uh, I, I think about one year and a half uh, when uh, it target uh, a nuclear uh, power station in United Arab Emirates. Uh, that uh, power station was still uh, uh, like they were, they were still building it. And then uh, the United Arab Emirates has delayed the reopening of that uh, power station. And this is the second uh, attack using this type of missile. So this means that uh, 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 the forces here in Sana'a still have many uh, surprises uh, to attack Saudi Arabia. And uh, on the top of, uh, of that, that uh, Saudi uh, uh, Patriot uh, system, which cost them hundreds uh, uh, of uh, millions of dollars, has actually failed to intercept cruise missile and drone attacks. So, uh, but let me make clear that Ansarullah the Houthi and uh, um, the, the leader of uh, uh, the Houthis, Abdul Malik al-Houthi, every time after any attack on Saudi Arabia or United Arab Emirates, he's calling them for peace. He's calling them to stop targeting Yemen infrastructure, to open okay. Sana'a airport. Uh, it's, it's totally the opposite what the Saudis is doing. They always keep threatening that they will destroy uh, the Houthi movement. They don't want any peace, even okay. though in Hudaida, Houthi okay. has withdrawn from uh, three ports and the Saudi has not withdrawn. Okay, Mr. Bakati, there we will have to leave. Hassan al-Bakati there, uh, a journalist there in Sana'a. Thank you.